DTSC is a next generation television platform. It's a brand new over the air transmission platform uh, that was developed by the industry, so it's a standard. And it was just recently approved by the FCC uh, for broadcasters to transmit in this new standard. What the standard is all about is really, it's, it's all about IP. It's an internet protocol based over the air transmission system. It's really bringing the web over the air. Our old transmission system, and I'm going to call it old, uh, was ideated in the 80s and implemented in the 90s. And Mark Zuckerberg was seven years old at that time. We, could, we didn't, couldn't have conceived of the iPhone. We were still using analog cell phones back then. They were just being implemented. Uh, Dial-up modems, the internet really didn't exist. We live in a wholly different world today where consumers are consuming our content. They want local news, they want television news and media and content. TV is growing in viewership, but it's happening cross-platform, across many platforms. ATSC, with its IP-based backbone, allows us to create a hybrid television viewing experience with the highest quality 4K, high dy dynamic range, immersive audio, but also with a modernized UI and the ability for consumers to access no, not only live linear, but a whole host of over-the-top streaming content and services that our companies currently produce and provide. Now with that comes viewership data, information about the viewer, as well as ability to enable addressable advertising. So tell us about what's going on in Phoenix in this uh, pilot program and, and the different pieces that need to come together uh, from the, the consumer electronics manufacturers to the, um, to the operators and uh, you know, what does the roadmap look like? There are multiple stakeholders that are required to enable this exciting new services for consumers. The CE manufacturers, TV manufacturers, set-top ma manufacturers, automotive, I can go on through a list of, of, of device types that could receive this service, to the broadcasters who have to transmit it, to our cable partners who will need to receive it. So the FCC only allowed us to enable this new service this past November, uh, November uh, 2017. The standard was just finalized in this, uh, January of 2018. It's a 2,000 page, page standard. We need to commercialize it. So in order to do that and figure out what are those, what is that basic TV service that will be interesting to consumers that they'll want to go run to, to Best Buy and, and purchase those new devices. The CE manufacturers want that to happen. It's a couple things. One is we need to enable, we need to be able to transmit that new service across the U.S. Broadcasters are going to need to allocate spectrum for this new service. It's called a transition to ATSC 3.0. The, uh, the trick will be, though, to do that, we have to also maintain our 1.0 services. And we want to. That's our bread and butter business as well as our multicast. But we can do that by spectrum sharing or co-sharing uh, what we call lighthouse stations that will then emit this new TV service. So you're going to start to see lighthouse facilities launched throughout the United States. Pearl, along with its partners in, in, in a model market, we chose Phoenix, uh, that's Fox, NBC, Univision, and PBS, established a test bed, an open test bed, for the industry to come to and collaborate. The same thing happened back in the days when we went from analog to HD, there was a model market. And that's where we're establishing the basic TV service. What, what, are, what are we emitting on day one? What is that receiver going to receive? What is that TV going to receive on day one? And then what is the, does the consumer care? Uh, so we have consumer labs also that we're standing up this fall. So we have systems on air. All, uh, all our stations are, are working through one lighthouse station that we're testing on. We're about to bring up another, uh, another station in Phoenix. And we're working with the CE manufacturers to develop both the transmit side and the TV side so that when you go buy a TV, you know what you're getting. Uh, we'll start to look at how we're going to call it, what the marketing is around it. You know, how does a consumer know what it is? Uh, and you'll start to see, again, it takes uh, some time to develop this. TV sets, early TV sets will be available uh, end of 2020. Cool, and um, how do you sort of see, getting back to your stations, your partners, and the people who are represented here at this conference, 
what is the opportunity from a monetization standpoint that's different or that's exciting and for the stations and perhaps for the, the programmers as well? Yeah, so you have to think about this as, if you think about this as an IP pipe, um, it's got a lot, a lot of capabilities that we can enable on the platform. We're going to start with the core TV services, that's what we know best. Uh, and there the monetization, the return on investment is really going to come from viewer retention uh, as well as data and advanced advertising. Uh, so there, there is the ability through the application uh, to collect viewership data. Of course, this is anonymized and, and privacy by design, but it also will enable us to do data informed sales. Uh, we have never, broadcasters have never had access to their own data on their own channels. Uh, and so that, that's something that's new and different and can be monetized. And of course the advanced advertising. But there's also, it's also interactive television. So more content can be offered to the consumer. You can offer catch up TV. If you missed your show, you can watch it again. Uh, you can offer coupons and offers. It's interactive. So we don't see ourselves necessarily developing a lot of this. Think of, the, think of this new platform like the Apple iOS platform where developers can come develop new applications and services that come right on top of our broadcast platform. We think that's going to happen. The other piece of this beyond the basic TV service is this is a really economical pipe. Because we're a one-to-many system, we can deliver at a fraction of the cost large data files, information, navigation, um, maps, all kinds of things to connected cars in autonomous vehicles. The future of autonomous vehicles is being predicted. They'll, they'll be using over four terabytes of data on an hour and a half basis, um, both in and out of the car. That's a lot of data that's going to require mul multiple access points of, of distribution in and out of the car. ATSC in its economics is certainly going to be a player there. Uh, so that brings a whole new world to, to broadcasters. The other piece of this is the future of the autonomous vehicle is the next living room. And local television, I think, is really going to be important in terms of information. ATSC also brings advanced uh, emergency alerting system. It's the world's first where you actually get information, video, uh, evacuation maps. It's interactive. It's the last resort. Uh, FEMA's testing it right now. It's, I also think it's going to be a big game changer for broadcasters. And then just understanding the coverage of the local stations, they don't cover everywhere. Uh, how does this become pervasive and cover the whole country, let's say, or does it? Will, will it? So if you think about a traditional DMA, it's a much more robust um, a distribution platform. So we can enable, uh, because of its efficiencies and, and the way it's architected, we actually can do deeper indoor uh, and broader coverage. So it's just up to us to determine the level of coverage we want in the market. The other thing it can do is scalable video. We can offer a service fixed into the home and we can offer a separate service on the same pipe into the car. So it's really dynamic in how it delivers um, both a uh, d distribution methodology to different device types, but as well as in the robust coverage. So we'll be covering DMAs. You can do handoff from market to market, but I don't know if you're necessarily going to need that. The future of the autonomous vehicle is really, if you think about fleet and Uber, their max mileage is about seven miles that they go within a DMA. So we're perfect for that type of use case in terms of, uh, in terms of viewing content inside of cars, delivery of information to cars. It's really all going to happen in DMAs.